glad to see that so many people are interested in this topic. Um, I think uh, this is a very important thing at first to tell you something about me. Um, I am the co-founder and co-owner of the very famous uh, company called Sectionet GmbH. Uh, GmbH is a German uh, abbreviation for Gesellschaft mit beschränkter Haftung, which means uh, limited. And everybody knows limited is big company, a lot of money. Um, we have we have uh, a lot of groups in our in our company. We have a management board. Uh, consists of two people, my wife Sigrid and me, and we have an excellent software development division with great great developer. Um, we have a support uh, division. We were able to to increase uh, the the power ma manpower of our support division about uh, thirty percent less less months. Um, we have a quality testing team and. Uh, yeah, I think I think we we got the point, right? Um, why I'm why I told you that? Because um, I was talking with many people. I was, I was um, uh, participating in many disc discussion about about uh, open source software and business model, and uh, even if sometimes people are um, considering that, many people believe that this can work only for big companies, and uh, well. It works for small companies too. We are apparently small company, and we are developing open source software, and actually we are doing quite well. And I, um, I tell always, small companies have uh, also some benefits. For example, um, the communication is much better. We have to imagine we, in the section that um, half of our team is sitting in the same office, so face to face, so we can communicate direct. Um, lately, it's a little bit more complicated because we have bought 27-inch uh, monitors, but there is a solution for everything. As we can see, we are using Skype for, for the communication later. <laughs> um, I would tell you a story. I think many of us, many of us developers know the story. Many of us developers um, has similar experience. There is some developer, he developed a piece of software and he shared the software with the community. And this software is getting more and more popular and this is really a really nice thing, but at some point uh, he has really a lot of support and, and, and uh, documentation and such thing. So it's caused a lot of work, it's very time consuming. So at some point this guy think, okay, I have an idea. I, I make my small company and start to sell my software. Well, it works. He did it. And it's getting better and better. As we can see here, he, he can buy a better equipment with the time. Um, and someday, he eventually found out that his software is being distributed in various forum, various sites, and so on. And then he's starting to considering how he can protect this software against redistribution. Um, Besides the fact that this is very time consuming and, and very annoying, uh, very annoying, uh, I think this is the fully wrong approach. I think we have to really consider what we actually selling. As I said, for the beginning we have a product, we have a software. We have a software and we believe that this is the product. Well, this is not quite true because if we have uh, brought a piece of software, we need also documentation. And documentation is basically very, very time consuming. If we need good documentation, it's expensive. Either because we have to write it by, by ourselves or we have to hire someone to do it. And this is really expensive. Um, however, it is not even such expensive as support. People want support and this is really a lot of work. And um, this is even much more time consuming. Um, if we want to exp expand, we need also translation. Um, I do a small, small tie of, of my, our diagram uh, for translation because we, when, we, we, when we are working with open source software, it may be funny, but people are willing to 
uh, translate our software um, for free if we, are, if, we, if we have a open source software, even if, if it's commercial software. We have some possibility, co uh, collaborative tools like, for example, Transifex, or even Open Translator, we can use, and uh, our, our, software, our software is being translated practically for, for, for free even. Um, addin additional, our product has to be tested. It is really important. If we have free of, of charge software and we have bugs in this software, people are willing to forgive us. But as soon as we are, going to, we are starting to sell this software, commercial software, then it is not that simple anymore. And I believe that this is practically what we call a product. This all together, not just a piece of software. And um, I don't know, I think many of us are uh, um, aware of the fact that Microsoft is selling um, the, same, uh, the same software in two different versions. Basically, this is exactly the same software, but they are selling it as a full featured version and as a system built version. Um, Microsoft don't want that uh, the system builder version is being sold, uh, sold to, the, to the end user. However, in German, in German, this rule has been overruled by court, so we can basically legally buy in, uh, the system builder version in, in Germany too. Um, the biggest difference in be between both of those versions is, besides the fan fancy box, of course, um, the full version is, includes support. And small manual, but mainly very limited support. And the price, the price difference is, is really big. So I can see um, the biggest part of the price of this product is the support, not the software itself. Um, one of the most, one of the biggest concerns from developer, um, they starting to sell uh, open source software is of course that this software is going to be redistributed by, by uh, different various websites. So um, they want, as I, as I told before, they want to protect this software, but it is very time consuming. Um, at some point, we, we are going to find that we probably need more time for protecting our software from being redistributed than from actually developing the software itself. Um, I think it is well known that every encryption can be decrypted and every security mechanism can be broken. So it doesn't really make sense. And, um, from my side, what I really don't like about it, because I did it too, I tried to protect uh, my software against the distribution, it is re really very strange feeling when you are working basically against your own client. You um, make an assumption that your client is going to copy your software and redistribute it. And this is really bad feeling. I think we should work for our client and not, not against our client. Um, and if we consider what I told before, that the software this is really a small part of our product, how does it matter at all that someone is redistributing our software? And also a very good argument against, against it, I think, in the meantime, especially in the Joomla scene, many people realize that when, when they are going to download software from various websites, it is very probably that this software will contain also some backdoors, viruses, whatever. So if they are going to install this software, it's very probably the next day the site has been hacked. Another important concern, well, our software can be forked. Yes, it can be forked, it's true. The important question is why? Why should someone fork our software? When our software is not good, well, sorry, shit happens. It's your fault. And I, I mean basically not software, but the product, the product itself. 
complete with support, with documentation, with all around G software. When our software, when our product is good, why someone should fork our software? When we um, take a look at the Joomla scene from the story, because such things happen sometimes, well, someone may take our software and try to make money with it. Because there are some people who believe, um, hey, you wrote software, I g I'm going to get your software and I will earn money with your software. You did a job and I can earn money. GPL allow it, right? Well, maybe, but if he get our software, he will have to provide support. He will have to write documentation. And this is still the biggest part of our product. So he will fail for sure. If really the only thing he, yeah? Um, what, what, what I mean, for we, okay. Basically, I mean, many people call it fork because they, they take our software, they, they relabel it, um, right? And, and, and they think they fork. This is not even really fork. Um, so as I said, he will fail because he needs to, he need to uh, do the whole jo job, the, the biggest part of our job, anyway. There is also another story. I know it really used to happen. Um, someone is going to relabel and fork our software because, well, he don't like us. I mean, f really, he don't like the, um, the, the way how we do our business. Uh, he mean, for example, we have much too expensive or whatever. Um, so he think, I get your software and I am, I'm going to provide it for our user for free. So I can harm you. I will cause some damage to your company. I saw it, really. There was a guy who uh, took a piece of software, an uh, extension, and um, he wanted to damage, uh, want to harm a, an, another company. He put this software on his own side. And he has a, a comment function on the same, uh, on the same page. So people downloaded the software and then starting to write support request in the comment function. So eventually he, he took this, this software from the website uh, away because it was work again. He has to provide the support. So he will fail for sure too. Just to, so, just to fork software, even really fork software, not just to relabel it, it doesn't guarantee any success. Um, we, have, we have much more than the software. We, have, we, have, we are providing support. Um, we have documentation. And there is also a very important factor. Many people forget it about it, forget about it. Um, if, you, if, we are, if someone wants to fork our software, he has to also understand our code. This is really not that simple. It is sometimes much easier to write a piece of software from the bottom than fork someone else's uh, software. And um, I think it, if, we, if we take a look at, at, the, at the open source world, um, most of those successful fork are fork by the developer itself. For example, Mambo has been, Joomla, uh, has, has been forked to Joomla by the Mambo development core team. And ju just therefore, they were, they were successful. And uh, lately, for example, OpenOffice has been forked to LibreOffice from the developer, because they, want, they, they w wasn't really happy with the management. And we are the de developer. So no one I probably is going to fork our software if we do, th do those things right. Other argument, people, uh, people um, trying to convince me that this is better to, uh, to create proprietary software. Well, because when I'm going to create proprietary software and I can limit the usage of this software for one computer, I can basically make money with each sold copy of the software. Well, for, from my side, it's, um, 
a little bit strange, strange for, that people, that developer, t tell me something like this because um, it's marginalized my uh, my uh, my uh, um, in, in involvement in, in this project because I create software um, and now everything else is just depend on the marketing, not on my work. And basically, beside them. Um, do we really believe that if Microsoft has created Windows to 95, I don't know, 10 years ago, even more, and since that moment they didn't have, uh, they didn't evolve, they didn't, uh, uh, they didn't um, uh, create new version of, of uh, Windows? Did someone really believe that Microsoft will be still this company, that they still will be in the business? I doubt it. So it's not just that we are, can create a piece of software and, and, and make money um, as long as people are going to buy this software. Um, we can provide support just for one sold copy. So this, the, the, the support is bound to, to each sold copy. It's true. But I'm going to tell something to, to this later. No one can fork our software. That's true too. But um, well, someone can copy our software. I mean the functionality of the software. He can create a competitor product. Um, it used to happen too. Um, a few years ago, or maybe um, maybe uh, maybe a bit longer, uh, there was a software for. Um, server management, a proper software for server management which uh, allow us to, um, uh, to, uh, to give our client, our, our user, um, a kind of control panel for the hosting packages. The problem uh, with the software was, was uh, at that time uh, Apache 2.0 has been created and um, the Apache Foundation tried to force people to update the Apache and this particular company um, didn't want it to create new version because it was a lot, a lot, a lot of work, of course. I, uh, they, they refused to, to update their software, and um, for the beginning, it stopped the stop, stopped the update of the of the um, uh, of the uh, Apache 2, 2.0. But with the time, other companies with competitors' product, they updated their software and they took a lot of of the market of the market. And eventually, the other company has, created, has updated too. But at that time, it was really late, and they they lost probably a lot of money. And well, no one can redistribute our software. Really, how it happened that I, I could probably have any every version of Microsoft Windows, of Microsoft Office, or whatever. I can find any, anything. So it's not true. Everyone can redistribute our software, even if it's proprietary and it's secured at whatever. Someone will break it. In the open source software model, we can also bind support to sold copy of our product. We can say, okay, you are going to buy uh, um, our software, but we are going to give you support just for one computer, one site, one domain. We can do this. It's allowed. Well, we have, in my opinion, happy clients. They can do with our software whatever they want. They can install it on many computers. They may not, not necessarily have support for every computer on, on which they install the software, by, but they can install it. As I said before, um, small companies are good, but apparently small companies, although they have some benefits, there are also some disadvantages with small companies. We are a small company, and let's imagine that we have now uh, a big client, a guy, uh, some company, they want to create a big complicated website, and they found out that our software is very suitable for it. Normally. Um, they may buy it and then 
um, but they will fear probably that w if we going out of the business, then they stuck with our software and they this is soft this software will never be updated, never never will will be maintained. While in open source software we have a big argument, we have a great argument, because we don't sell just the um, possibility to use the software, the right to use the software. We are sell we are selling the software itself, the code with it. And we can also say, okay, maybe, maybe it can happen that we are going out of the business, but you have the code. You can do with the code whatever you want. So if something get, goes wrong, in the worst case scenario, you can hire another company to maintain the code. And this is really a very good argument. I think it's a matter of fact, it it's, been, has been proven in the meantime that open source software is much more secure and the code has much m better quality. I think also a very important argu uh, argument is that as open source software developers, we have uh, access to, to a very wide um, field of third party library. And most of these uh, libraries are either free of charge or very cheap. And if any one of us has ever tried to create a, a pr proprietary software and needed some dead party libraries to buy, um, he would know how expensive this can be. It can be really extremely expensive. Well, it's just something I think. It's just fair. I've been searching in internet uh, a little bit about um, existing uh, existing um, business model with open source software. It's a lot there, um, and uh, honestly, none of them is really suitable in to selling Joomla extension with open source uh, open source Joomla extension and, and in the business world. But however, each of them has some advantages, so we can we can we can take um, some ideas from, th from this uh, license model and uh, create our own customized model, I, I will say. Um, I'm not going to um, describe those because everyone can find this internet. So which, which, which models, which sales models, which uh, business model existing in the Joomla uh, world at all? Well, this is the most common model, I think. We can we can sell a product exactly the same way as if it were be proprietary software. We can limit the usage of our product. And I mean the usage of our product, not of the software. The software is just a part of our product. We can say it, we, are provide, we provide uh, the support only for one domain. You can install this software on how many, how many sites you want but we are going to provide support just on one side. If you want to uh, uh, support for another side, you have to pay, uh, pay again for it. Um, some, some companies are providing also some uh, additional services. I think Simple Machines Form uh, offers also uh, one uh, installation service on one side or something like that. It's an example we can use it too. Um, and many, many developers are using exactly this, this model and it seems to be very popular and it seems to work. Um, another very popular model is a, a subscription based. Um, the idea behind this is basically we are charging for access to, to software and its updates. Um, we can also limit um, we can give, grant access to one or more extension. I think in, in most cases it's, it's, uh, uh, it's so that uh, this, um, how many extension access we have is dep depend of the subscription level. I think uh, Red, uh, Red Shop do something like that. They, they have many subscription level and if you uh, take the, the highest you have basically uh, access to all extension they provide. And we can also limit the usage of, of the software, I mean support. However, um, honestly, I think that the limi limiting of the 
um, of the usage of the of the support we are providing for some site. It's 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 legal. It's 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 okay, but it's technically really uh, technically really complicated, and it's not really worth it because we have to control our clients uh, if they if they install this software on another domain, on other sites. Um, we can, but it's really complicated. We can grant access to an online documentation for subscriber only. Um, well, why, why should we? Basically because, let's be honest, we want to earn money with it. We want to, that the people are buying the subscription and if the subscription has expired, that they renew the subscription. It's an argument to renew on subscription. And um, beside them, I, I honestly, I like, I like to have our documentation online because we, we can keep it up to date. Every time we release new version, we just do some small modification in the, in the website and this documentation is up to date. And basically, similar situation, we can, we can provide additional services uh, like installation service, or for example, um, access um, to online update and, and such things. A community-driven uh, model. This is basically the model the Sectionet is using. I didn't find anyone else using this model exactly the same way. The basic idea is we, we can charge people for access to a very special community. Um, for timely limited access to a very special community where the developer, for example, and also the supporter of this company are also members of this same community. This is the way how support is being provided. Um, same idea, depending on the membership level, access to the different extension for different time. And the rest is really very, very similar uh, to the, to the subscription-based uh, based, um, model. Grant access to online documentation, same, same idea. Um, important thing is we, are, we, are, we can try to involve, it's a very good idea, I think, we can try to involve our community to uh, to take part uh, in the uh, development process. And I don't need now uh, just a core, uh, core um, uh, submission to, to our, uh, to our uh, software, but more just um, allow, allow our community to, to decide, for example, which features will be implemented as next, which, uh, which application we are going uh, to, to develop as next and such things. So this really um, has not just advantages for the members itself because they can they can uh, create the, the, the software with with us, but this also I think uh, this is also very good advantage for the developer itself because they know what the what the clients want, what the user want. And as a side effect, we have uh, we have really community where members helping other members, and they do this really, and I think it's also a benefit for the members because when they are going to help other members, they are learning about the software, how, to, how it can be used, so they get gathering experience. So we can basically involve user in support too, in providing support. Um, when, when we are working with open source, open source software in the business model, um, there, there are some problems. Um, we have to really, we have to do really active development. So something like uh, agile software development methods are really very suitable for it. Um, we have to release frequently. Um, we, have, we have to uh, evolve. We have to um, implement new features in our software frequently. And this is, uh, for example, a very, very good um, weapon against uh, virus. Because if someone took our software and put it on a virus website, and uh, two weeks later we are going to release new version, new updates with new security fixes, 
if we had any. Or with, for, uh, for, for, uh, sorry, uh, and with, with uh, new features, then this version on the virus side is old, and people are go coming back to us to buy ex to buy the subscription, uh, to pay us because they want to have the new newest version with the best features. We have to, of course, list listen to our users, which is clear. We have to we have to listen to our user and imp implement, um, of course, not everything the user want, but but uh, we we should just listen to our user and try to find out what they really need and implement it. And we have to, of course, have active support. Um, the pre pressure in so open source software development may be a little bit higher, but um, honestly, I don't really think that. There are uh, disadvantages because when we are going to when we are going to develop a proprietary software, and um, we do not do all those things, yeah, for the for the beginning we, we may be, be successful with it, but sooner or later someone will come and copy our software and do uh, copy I mean the functionality of our software, and. Um, it, this, when we are going to imp to, to, to develop uh, proper software and skip all those things, so we have uh, some kind of uh, false security feeling. Uh, we, we feel sure for the first time, but someday it may be too late, someone others create better version of our software and we are out of business. And in open software, we can realize it much, much sooner, much faster. So, which leads me, lead me to the conclusion that open source software development <laughs> literally kicks our asses. <laughs> okay, you were very fast. Any questions? Yes. Um, uh, which 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 uh, model of license we are using to, for our extension? This is this uh, community driven. So yeah, so we have uh, basically a section at GmbH or GmbH sounds of, uh, better in English. Um, we we are using this model where we are giving people access to to our forum. Um, we are providing support via our forum. However, we are participating in the, in this in this forum too as. Developer, a supporter, and so on. And Are you happy with the results from this model? I beg your pardon? Are you happy with the results so far? I mean, I, I, am, I, am I happy with this result? Uh, well, if I wouldn't be happy, I wouldn't try to convince you that this is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I am happy, yes, I am happy. It's an option. It's, uh, beg your pardon? It's an option. It's an option, yeah. yeah. But honestly, I'm really happy. I'm really happy, especially about the fact that I am not, that we do not have to work against our client. That we don't do not have to assume that our client is going to to stall our software and redistribute. Because I really don't care if they do. Any question? <laughs> Sorry. What do you think about release early, release often? Yeah, this, what, what, do I do, what do I think about release uh, early, uh, release often? This is basically what we are doing. Um, we have released uh, the very first version of Sobi Pro in the stable version um, about a year ago. Yeah, and since, since that time we released already seven new versions. It's not really much, but I think it's enough. We are trying to, we are trying to release um, every uh, two months and 28 September, 28 and so on. So it, this is this is a really good weapon against uh, redistribution on various websites and so on. Um, okay, I, I have to repeat your question. Uh, how do we inform our client about about updates? And well, most of our users 
in the community they are in form and uh, they, uh, uh, they, they subscribe to our news. Uh, so much versions are, it's not really, as I said, seven, seven versions since, uh, since a year, for the least, last year. And uh, the update is not really critical. We have uh, um, the possibility uh, in the administration area in Joomla, in, in Sobi Pro itself, uh, you will be also informed if, if the version is, um, 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 if there is new version. And you can basically, with two clicks, update the version to the latest. So you, so you send emails and then they can, install, they can download it? No, 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 no. We, we do not send emails. Um, uh, the first, uh, first idea is that K, they, the, then K, uh, the, so, sorry, then K, the, they can uh, subscribe to our RSS feed. This is the one idea, and beside, beside them, when you are going to the administration panel of Sobi Pro and click on the, no, you don't, you don't have to click anywhere. And the, and the, and the main page, if, the version, if there was a new version, there will be a message that the new version is available. And then you go to the repository. We have a, something called repository management. And then you can click one click, and then this version is, is going to be updated automatically, as, like Joomla do, does it. Yeah. The keyboard tool, yes. Yeah. There's a new version, you want to do a yeah. backup, it says you can do a backup, and do you want to install a new version? So. Any more question? Okay, then, thank you very much.